Mennonite Heritage Village at Home for Kids. I'm your host, Hannah Friesen. Today, I'm at the Dirk Wilms Peace Gardens, which you'll find out the significance of this later on in the show. Today on the show, we have the story of Dirk Wilms, illustrated by Marguerite de Heer, told by Patrick Friesen. And we also have a fact tour demonstration done by Nita. Enjoy! This is the story of a man named Dirk Wilms. Dirk Wilms lived nearly 500 years ago in the city of Aspirin, which is in Holland. Dirk was part of a religious movement called the Anabaptists. It's from this movement that we get the Mennonites. The Anabaptists wanted to change the way the state church operated and be independent from the government. So these Anabaptists separated from the church uh, that was part of the state because they believed that following Jesus meant that people should only be baptized when they were old enough to decide for themselves. The state church did not like that at all, and said that anyone who believed that they should like that should be arrested. Once they were arrested, if they didn't turn away from believing, they would be tried by a court and sentenced to die. Dirk Wilms baptized adults in his house and would hide Anabaptist leaders in his house. One day, the leaders of the state came and arrested him and put him in the castle prison. They tried really hard to force him to go against what he believed, so day after day they would do terrible things to him, trying to force him to change. One day in winter, when it was cold enough to get a layer of ice across the creeks, Dirk Wilms escaped. One of the security guards saw him running away and began to chase him. Dirk Wilms ran across the frozen ice, hearing the thin ice crack all around him. But he made it to the other side. The security guard ran onto the ice as well, but because he was wearing some armor and was bigger than Dirk Wilms, he fell through the ice into the frigid water. Dirk Wilms heard the ice crack, turned around and saw that the man was going to drown. He felt sorry for the security guard and so went back onto the ice and rescued the man from the water. The security guard went to the prison master and said that Dirk Wilms should go free because he saved his life. But the prison master would have none of it and it actually threatened the security guard. So Dirk Wilms returned to jail where shortly after he was put to death by the government of the city. It may be a sad ending to, the, to a great story, but in Dirk Wilms' death, we see someone who put the well-being of everyone, including the security guard, above his own, above his own life. He gave up his life to save someone else, which hopefully reminds us of another story. But that's for another day. Hi, everyone. It's Nita from the museum. And uh, today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about a, a, lo a lost art called Fracture. It is something that the Mennonites um, brought with them from Russia. And before they uh, had it in Russia, they brought it with them from Prussia and the Netherlands. Fracture is an ancient art of um, illuminating or decorating uh, letters that you wrote, um, the alphabet. Uh, it was practiced in Europe by the, in the medieval times uh, by monks who would take scripture and I'm sure you've all seen it, a beautiful letter N and then text beside it. That is fracture. There was a way to draw attention to a significance of a text. Now, many of the men in early Mennonite leaders uh, would have learned this technique of a fracture in the universities because they were university uh, students, and uh, so they brought that with them when they uh, went to start the, the Mennonite faith and would have taught that in the schools, and that's how that got passed down. It's a beautiful tradition. Uh, Mennonite school children would spend hours every week practicing. What happened was uh, a teacher would have a hand-drawn book of lessons, not like the textbooks everybody had um, necessarily, 
but a teacher would have and then have a, a textbook that he had made or she had made and that would be used to teach the children and they would use Fractor, not only they would copy from what the teacher had done, and that way they were learning the art of the illustration, but they were also learning how to do the things that were being described, say subtraction, multiplication. We'll show you some examples a little bit later on. Um, so they would have a beautiful textbook that they had drawn, and uh, depending on the child's artistic ability or inclination, you would have a wide variety of, uh, of talent. I want to show you an example of three pieces. This is a subtraction page. That's the cover. But I want to show you that um, one teacher three students and that is the individual coming out there. Different style of roses but basically the essential um, mathematical arithmetic text. You would have your, your graphs all done in that student's handwriting. Beautiful way to learn your, um, your school your schoolwork. Lovely, I think anyways. I'm a bit of an artist. Um, so faith and family and community were very important to the Mennonites and uh, they were often intertwined. So at Christmas or at New Year's it was tradition for the school teacher to help the children uh, prepare a Christmas gift or a New Year's wish for their family, their mother and father. And so they would work on this at school. They would make a beautiful, beautiful lettering, but it would be a, a wish for their parents that things would go well that year, that they would be free from pestilence and from starvation. So with the Mennonites, you could often tell what they were going through according to what was in their children's um, wishes that they wrote for their parents and then part of the tradition was once this item had been prepared it was recited or read to the parents at home and then presented and a lot of those pieces of art were framed and put on uh, parents walls they were put inside books they were used to line trunks to hold precious uh, items. And uh, so it was kind of a special thing that Mennonite families and schools and church and community all had going there. Um, but by the time the Mennonites came to Manitoba in 1874, Fracture was not in common use anymore. There had been large educational reforms because some of the, um, the quality of education wasn't great, but uh, reforms had happened with Cornies. And, uh, but the Berktal uh, colony had been largely unaffected by the educational reforms. And so their members continued to practice fracture and uh, brought it with them when they came to Canada. There are several different kinds of fracture. Um, some of the ones that we've been looking at, this would be considered um, Furschrift or school fracture. It was learning and decorating all at once. Um, there was the reward drawing. Oh, and I'm not even gonna attempt that German word. <laughs> uh, but that was given like the, um, we were talking about the Christmas wish. Those were special um, drawings given to people. And um, also they prepared book plates for themselves. They would do a beautiful design and then inside the books that they owned, because it was not common to own a lot of books, uh, they would have their name 
engraved. I believe I have a copy of a book plate. Whoop. Oh, there's another one. That is another kind, and that is the Irrgarten, and it's the drawing of um, a maze or a pattern. This, in, in, in instance, happens to be a game about well-behaved children and all the rules <laughs> that uh, you played to get your well-behaved child. But anyway, you know what a book plate looks like. It has a beautiful initial, a name, often the date, uh, where the person came from, uh, the place where the came from, and the date that the person owned the book. And then uh, there was also cut work, Schirrenschnitte, uh, where you would fold a piece of paper, just like um, in school you made snowflakes, and you would do that and then you would decorate it well, with either poetry or uh, just a continuous verse. We have some beautiful examples of uh, poetry written, um, a man to his bride, here at the museum that you just have to come and see. It's amazing. Um, they would use, I'm using ink here and a, a metal nib on the ink pen. Uh, but uh, if you didn't have access to readily made ink, you could make your own ink. Uh, uh, walnuts would give you a beautiful rich brown. Uh, blues, reds would come from flowers, berries, various techniques to do that. But um, in school, it, where the Mennonites, this would have been brought for them. All right, let's do a little bit of practicing. Um, we will have some supplies online, uh, a place where you can connect to this gentleman who has beautiful uh, PDF of um, Fracture. And these are some of the examples, just the Fracture alphabet. And then uh, you go down and you would practice it. And that's the joy of calligraphy or of fracture is you have to practice because it doesn't come out perfect uh, first try. And, uh, but it is a joy. Uh, and this website can take you into quite a lot of detail that I won't go into today. But um, there are practice pages. So, why don't we give one of those a try? I have some right here that I'd like to use. And this one is just practicing the plain fat uh, rectangle. And here you can see that there's some marks noting the, uh, the uh, direction and shape of the bits and pieces. Now, fracture comes from the word fracture, same, same root word. And so fracture is a lot more broken, broken up and uh, sharper edges and spaces in the lettering. But really what I want is for you to, this is not done very much anymore, but I want you to be able to say, yeah, my handwriting is awful. I'm going to practice. I'm going to practice my printing. I'm going to enjoy my printing. I'm going to embellish my printing. Uh, you can do stuff like make a bookmark. Why don't we uh, do some practicing and see what we can come up with. I'm going to start with this page and we're going to take our ink. I'm going to go with the blue. And you can tell that there's two different kinds of nibs here that I have. There's, I'm sure, very many more. This one, I don't know if you can see this, just has a plain point. And then when you press it down on a paper, you can see that it splits. This one has the same idea, it has the splits, but it has um, a, 
a, a kind of a lever over top. And that's what's going to give you the skinny lines and the fat lines. So if you want to take a look, I take my pen, dip it into my ink. Wish me luck. You hold the pen so that it is at an angle. You can see on this piece of paper, there's a line, sorry, there's a line there. That's the angle you want to hold it at. So for this one, the angle goes straight up and down. It's just a plain start and you press, I have it upside down, the, the solid piece goes on the bottom. And then you press and draw along. And it's tougher than you look. it looks. Sorry, I'm pressing a bit hard. There we go. Now I had a fair amount of ink on there. But you can see it is hard to get it perfectly straight, but you can see that if I do another one, chances are I'm going to run out of ink. So you don't want to load it up too much, but you also want to have enough ink to do at least one or two. So you have round, if you're going to make your B's and your D's, that you just fill your pages. Practice, practice, practice. Practice does make perfect. Now, one of the uh, things that is special for me about Fracture is the illustration that comes with it too. You have your text, but then you have illustrations. And the Mennonites, uh, very practical people, but also uh, their faith was very deep. And um, so there was a lot of symbolism in the items that they used to embellish the schoolwork or the letters or the poetry that they were writing. And uh, these will also be on the website. Um, I give credit to whoever drew them. I've just pulled them from various forces, uh, sources. And um, for example, a bee is in Mennonite um, fracture. A bee would signify hard work or industry, uh, you know, busy like a bee. Um, a deer would be a symbol of of God's faithfulness to us and our thirst after him. Uh, the, the verse in, in the psalm where it talks about my soul pants after you like the deer pants after water. So that represents um, a, a relationship between the Mennonite and his God and the faith and his uh, different flowers, a rose, Let's see, I know I have it here. A rose would signify beauty. And I think we'll all agree that a beautiful flower, <laughs> rose is. Um, tulips uh, meant something else. Uh, there's many different uh, interpretations. Grapes would uh, feature in these. And if you saw a cluster of grapes on a Mennonite fracture, you knew that it meant abundance and um, God's provision. So really kind of cool how those, there's, there's more messages than just what's written. Now, if you're worried about straight lines and having it look good, I'm going to pretend that I'm going to write, uh, uh, make a book plate for myself for me to paste inside a book that belongs to me, that is precious to me, and that I want returned to me if it ever goes away. <laughs> a simple thing like using uh, a compass, very lightly, you would just draw your circle like so 
And you want to do it very lightly because you might want to erase it afterwards. And then if you want lines, you just take a pencil and I think I'm just going to put my name and the date. So I'm just lightly drawing. So now I am going to go with these uh, calligraphy pens just because this is messy and hard and requires a lot of practice. Most of these calligraphy pens uh, skinny on one end, fat on the other. So depending on what I want to do, I'm going to do a nameplate. So I'm going to use the fat one because I'm just not going to have a whole lot of letters, but I want them to be beautiful and fancy. And then you take your alphabet. I had my alphabet here, right there. And then you would just practice. And I would take my letter N here. Not the world's greatest, but it'll do for the purpose. My first line. Then uh, they would either decorate with ink. I could outline the circle. Um, let's see. Let's try a little bit of watercolor. I am going to draw a tulip a purple tulip. So I take my watercolor, add just a touch. The thing with watercolors is you don't need a whole lot of color and you don't need a whole lot of water. I just have a little spritzer um, that I'm going to spray on top of my ink. I don't know if you can see that. But then I drop my paintbrush. Come on, there we go. Doesn't take a whole lot, just a little bit. Now I suppose that I should take my skinny calligraphy pen and draw the outline of tulip. It's pretty lopsided, but I think it'll do the trick. I just take my watercolors. And when you're going out to buy markers, you do want to have permanent markers uh, that don't pick up or bleed when you're putting water and paint next to them because then they'll smear. So I just add as I need it. Now in the early days, um, they wouldn't have had printer paper or watercolor paper uh, as such, but they would have, um, their paper would have had a lot of rag content, a lot of cotton in it. So it, it held the ink and uh, the brilliance of the ink and watercolors uh, more permanently than uh, some other methods would. Now, of course, because paper 
not a lot of it survived, but this is a good example of of uh, some fracture. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add some swirls. Always have trouble doing it the same the other direction. Oh, it's not too bad. And then I want to do a decorative Remember this circle that I drew in pencil? It makes me look good at the end because my circle is perfect. And really the imagination sky's the limit. Hopefully this will just give you a little bit of hunger to try something that you haven't tried before or to go back and practice something that you did a long time ago, or learn something absolutely new. It doesn't have to be fracture, but um, art can be very simple. I would cut that and put that in the front cover of my book. People would know it belonged to me. And uh, it's just practicing fracture. I hope that you've enjoyed some of the things that I've shared today. Uh, do come in to the museum and see some beautiful examples of fracture done over the ages. Uh, also, the education section here in the gallery. Hope you enjoyed that. Till next time, toodaloo. I hope you enjoyed the story in the craft. I sure did. This summer we have day camps. There are four different day camps going on. There will be a link in the description to go to our website to check them out. Make sure you register early to get a discount. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe and share with all of your friends. And don't forget to hit the bell for a notification every single time we up upload a video. See you next week.